Hey guys, Tony here. It's Tuesday, October 23rd, and the rain is out, so I'm taking this opportunity to film inside again. Today we're going to be cleaning a reel with a new product that was sent to me. I've been using it on other applications, but I have yet to use it on my fishing reel. So we're going to break this Corrado down, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the spray while I'm doing it. And I'm also going to show you some bearings that I've found that work really well. I've been using them in my other Corrados. They're ceramic ABEX 7s, just like the Boca bearings, except they're from China. They are cheaper, but they're holding up so far. I'll give you more information on that as well. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about this product. Interflon or Interflon, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. It also says Fin Super on there as well. So for the sake of this video, we're going to call it Fin Super. What it is, is a lubricant, a rust preventative uh, it does all kind of stuff, but it's like a paint can. It's a it's an aerosol spray, which can also be used on electronics. And you don't have to use very much because it supposedly has this mic pole technology, which the mic is micro, so it's at a microscopic level. It really gets into all the nooks and crannies and the parts. I don't know. I've never used WD-40 or rim oil or anything and felt like it wasn't getting into the parts, but something that did interest me is this pole part, the mic pole, which stands for polarized. So it's not a greasy lubricant. It actually adheres to the components by polarity. So it's, it's charged. That's kind of cool if that's legit. Again, they advertise that it lasts 10 times longer and um, they sent it to me to give it a try and uh, I've been using it on rusty pliers and stuff like that. The part that interests me the most about this product is that I can use it on uh, electrical components. So, so I got a lot of electrical components on my kayak, buses, uh, connectors, uh, inline fuses, stuff of that nature. And to be able to spray this on that and it act as a corrosion inhibitor, that's pretty cool. And if it lasts 10 times longer, hey, why not? I have a link in the description if you guys want to check it out. It is available on Amazon. But uh, I'm going to give it a shot here on my reel. I'll come back in a later video and tell you guys how it's holding up. I am going to be switching out this reel to ceramic bearings. So that's one thing I, I like about uh, ceramic bearings. You don't have to oil them. So I'm pretty lazy when it comes to reel maintenance. Interflon Fin Super. This is a 300 milliliter can. It's aerosol. Check it out. All right. So I got some paper towel rolled out. This is my real maintenance box. I have rim oil. This is what I normally use, but we're not going to be using that today. We're going to use the Fin Super. Got a toothbrush in here, a little screwdriver. This is my ceramic bearings from China. A little paintbrush, some cotton swabs, some pin precision grease, and I got some Shimano oil, and a little tiny crescent wrench. So this is the Shimano Corrado 200 HG 72 to 1. This is a great reel. It's a workhorse. A lot of people don't like them for some reason. Like they don't cast far and I think they're just not really understanding how to adjust the settings because I've had zero problems with this reel and it casts great in my opinion. So I start off by removing the side plate and this one it stays attached but I just take the spool out like so. When I take my reel apart I lay out everything here on this paper towel in order of which I'm taking it off so there's no confusion when you go to put it back together. So this was a Corrado I purchased from a friend it's really dirty um, I want to clean it all up but I'm going to use this as the reel on my frogging rod Now I would prefer a higher gear ratio for frog fishing, which I'm about to take care of that because Cast King is sending me their new Royal Legend Elite Reel. I'll be doing a tabletop review and on the water review of that reel. I'm really excited about that. It's like a eight one to one gear ratio reel. So, and it's, I think it's 60 something dollars. So excited about that. Let's go ahead and tear down this reel. First, the little Phillips head screw comes off with the cap, a little crescent wrench. That was actually kind of loose. You got to be careful with Shimano. As soon as you take that screw off, everything wants to pop off because there's a spring behind the drag star. So you got to hold that drag star when you're sliding this stuff off. And again, I'm laying it down in front of me in the order I'm taking it off. There you go. And there's your little spring here. This one's a little seized up. So 
If you ever come to this problem, I need to unscrew this little keeper nut on this shaft here. I just slip my handle back on, like so, and take my little crescent, put it on the nut, and unscrew it. Some people keep the spool in and they keep their thumb on the spool, which is basically doing the same thing in a sense, but you're keeping pressure on the uh, worm gear and the paw, and you can bend your paw doing that if you continuously do that over time. So oh, I would recommend just using your handle. And now you see that thing's loose. It'll come right off. There we go, that. And then you'll always have some washers. And I try to pull them off all together, keep them stacked up and just set them down. That way they don't get mixed up. And my spool tension knob, we'll unscrew it, take it off. There's a spring here. I'm gonna leave that spring there for now, but we're gonna remove that spring to be able to put our new ceramic bearings in but we'll do that later. Let's go ahead and remove this side plate. What I try to do is turn the reel up like that, unscrew all the screws. There's two on this side and one on the inside. Take this one, set it aside. I'll unscrew this guy. Oh, sorry, there's three on this side. Missed one. Unscrew it. And this plate should pop right up after you unscrew the screws all the way. There we go. And I leave the screws right in this plate and just set it down. That way there's no confusion on what screw goes where. And then the first thing I always do is remove the little springs here. Because they're easy to lose. Lose track of what you're doing. Turn the reel to its side and these will fall off and you'll never find them. We're to the meat part now, I'm just gonna go ahead and take apart all of this. Gear just slides off all in one piece. Drag washer's inside of that. We'll lay it down. We're gonna pull this brass gear out. Set it down and that's pretty much it. So now I'm just gonna spray it down with the Fin Super. Let's see if it gets all this gunk off. You can see there's a bunch of gunk right there. Right there, we're gonna just spray the whole thing down. Okay, I'll let that marinate for a second, and then I'll take my toothbrush and scrub it and get all that uh, broken up dirt and grime off, and then in the real small crevices, that's where your Q-tip comes into play. Okay, so I've pretty much scrubbed everything that I can scrub. And that dirt is coming off, but there's dirt particles all on this paper towel. Yeah, she looks pretty good. I'm going to wipe off that grime with a paper towel. And then I'll go in with the Q-tip and the small crevices. You always want to get in between the spool release really good. There's always a lot of dirt that gathers up in there. Start casting your reel and it starts getting hard to press. You probably just got some buildup in there that you need to get out. It happens on all reels. Clean the races really good. I'm not sure if that's called a race or not, but clean this spot. <laughs> you really can't have too many cotton swabs when it comes to this. Tell you what, she's looking good. Now, I could do a complete breakdown and take out the worm gear and all that, but I normally don't do that. It's normally not needed to make your own decision, but again, if you keep up with your reels pretty good, there's no need in taking it down to that point. That's good. This reel is all clean now. Set it aside. I'll show you how I clean the drag washer. On the drag washer here, we just take it apart. So here's the little gear on the bottom. I'm gonna take it off. It has a drag washer on it underneath. And then we'll take out the inside like that, like that, and like that. So there's your components of the drag. And what I do with the washers themselves is I just rub them in a circle on the paper towel. That'll get all the dirt and grease off. Be careful not to move your paper towel and change the order of things. You might want to do it on a separate paper towel. I just flip it over and do the same thing. And there you go. That washer is clean. I'm going to do this washer like that and flip it over. Do the same thing. 
And the reason I'm keeping them flat is because a lot of times these drag washers are kind of brittle. Stick them in your hand and you're trying to clean them, you can not easily break them sometimes. Now on the Shimano's I can say I would upgrade the drag washers. They're not known for having great drag washers and you can get some Carbon Tex drag washers and uh, you'll be problem free for a long time. Now if we look at the gear here, there's the inside and you can see all the crud and everything, the build up and that's the kind of stuff that'll prevent your reel from having a smooth drag system. So you want to clean all that out. So we're going to use the fin super and a cotton swab to get all that out. So I'm just going to spray a little bit in here. Not much. I'll let that marinate. And sometimes too, if you have a reel that you know you saltwater fish, you'll take these things apart and it'll have part of the drag washer almost welded to the brass. And I've taken some really high grit sandpaper and cut a little disc and sanded these to get this part really, really smooth. Because if this isn't smooth, I don't care what drag washer you put on there, you're going to have issues. So that broke most of it up. I'm going to take a paper towel, get most of that gunk out. Bottom is really nice and shiny. You can still see that there is some grime on the edges, but I don't have the sandpaper to sand it down. I'm not going to go through all the trouble. I think it'll still be fine. I can run my fingernail over it. It's not anything that's going to prevent the drag washer from operating smoothly. So I'm going to leave it as be, but we're going to go ahead. You need to clean the teeth on the side, and that's where the toothbrush really comes in handy. So I just take it. You scrape it down in a circular pattern and I would do this away from you because you'd be surprised how bad you can dirty up a shirt doing this. So I've wiped the back of the gear. You can see they generally always are going to look like this. I wouldn't worry about it. It's still going to be fine. I'm running my finger over it and it feels glass smooth. So you're good there. This is clean. Our drag washers are clean. Now we just need to clean off our uh, two last pieces. And we can do that simply by just taking a paper towel and wiping it down. There you go. Clean. You can see this. See the grime there. Wipe it down real quick. Clean. Now we're going to take some of this pen multi-purpose drag grease. I'll have a link for this. Works really good and it's got a ton of it so this will last you the rest of your life and your kids life and his kids. So that's what it looks like. I just take my finger put a little bit on there. Not much. Rub it between fingers with my thumb and just make little fingerprints on these drag washers. You don't need a lot of grease. Get a little bit more. You don't want your drag slipping so much that you got to really tighten it down to get it to, to lock down. I'm going to take that ring and I'm going to stick it back in the gear. Kind of give it a little spin. Spread that grease out a little bit. If I got a little excess on my finger I'll rub it on the back of this plate. It's not necessary, but I do it anyway. Like that. Kind of give it a spin. And we're going to do the same thing on the back side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and slide this gear back on. She's going to go on like that. And then I'll do this washer. Get her all greased up nice. There we go. Slide it on. And slide our main gear back on. Ba boom Now as far as the rest of the parts you want to clean too, I'm not going to show myself cleaning all these other parts. I mean that's pretty self-explanatory. Got little nooks and crannies where you need to get dirt out. Use the Q-tips, everything else with threads and whatnot. Use the toothbrush. The only other thing, I keep my dirty cotton swabs and I'll pull some of the, the swab off and I'll run this swab through the little um, the spool shaft gear. You pull some of the cotton off, you can slide the cotton swab. I gotta pull a little bit more. You're basically almost just left with the cotton swab stick. And it's just barely enough to get through there. Still need a little more. Uh, I think a lot of people neglect doing this step and it's very important because the, the spool on the reel, the spindle on it, rides inside of this and if you got dirt and grime inside of this little piece it'll really affect your uh, casting distance. 
I'm having a little trouble with this one. Normally you pull off a little cotton and they go through, but I guess them Shimano tolerances are tight. Okay, this one's starting to go through. You can hear it squeaking. Now there you go. I went through, look at the tip of that swab. Not much dirt, but it is dirt. So now I'm going to spray it down with a little thin super. Give it a little lube. I bet you it'll go through really easy now. Yeah, there we go. Run that back and forth just like you're cleaning a barrel on a gun. It's squeaky clean. And there you go. As far as the outside, again, anything with gears or threads, I like to use the toothbrush to get in between those. That's pretty much it. I'm going to clean the rest of these parts get it together to a point where we're going to replace the stock Shimano bearings with the Chinese ABEX 7 ceramics. The paintbrush, I use it to dip into my grease and you want to grease the paper towel. You want to grease the main gear. I usually go around about halfway. I also have some lighter grease, but I kind of prefer this heavier stuff on the on the Corrados. Like I said, I go about halfway around. That's about all you need. It'll spread naturally just by using the reel. If there's any excess grease on top of the main gear, I just wipe it off with my finger and rub it back into the teeth. All right, so I've got everything for the most part back together besides the handle. So we're about to swap the bearings out. We got one here in the side plate and right here on the tension knob. One right inside there, we've got to take out this spring and we're going to be replacing them with these Chinese ABEX 7s. They look just like the Bocas, they're the orange seal. You can see I got a mix in there because these are the bearings from some of the reels that I replaced with the ceramics. But these are the 3 by 10 by 4 millimeter and then I have another pack I ordered. These are the 5 by 11 by four millimeter. I'll have to go back and see how much I paid for these guys, but I don't think it was over 10 bucks. It did come from China. It did take a long time to get here, but it was better than buying some $30 Boca bearings. And I think you only get what, two or three for your reel and it'll cost you 30 bucks plus shipping. Um, I'm not knocking Boca. They make good stuff. This was under 10 bucks and I think I had quantity five in each pack. So I got 10 for under $10. So uh, just depends on how you want to spend your money. There's a small keeper that holds this bearing in place. We're gonna pop it out. You gotta be real careful. These are really small and they're easy to lose. So I'd keep your finger over it while you're trying to remove this. I'm not gonna show it on camera just because it's so tight in there. You're not probably gonna be able to see anyway, but uh, I'll show you the bearing once I pull it out. Okay, so that's the little bitty keeper and there's the bearing. I'm gonna take a clean cotton swab and go ahead since I got the bearing out and clean in here gunk and grime out and i'm also going to clean around this race this little brass section right here that you can see reflecting i'm going to just take my cotton swab and hit the outside of that and that's it so now we're going to match up this bearing with one in the package and this bearing looks like it's one of the three by ten by fours i think i can lay one on top the od matches and the id matches so that's my bearing right there. I'm just going to drop it in, pops right in, and then I'm going to put that little keeper pin on top to lock it in place. I'm going to do the same exact thing on this side. I'm going to clean up the spool and the rest of these parts, get them back on the reel, and we're going to be done. She is all back together and she looks good. All clean, drags working smoothly. I wish I would have did a, a free spool test before I put the ceramics in, just to give you guys a difference, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you hear this. Now, I don't have the line tied down. My line is slapping the spool release, making noise, but ceramic bearings are always gonna be a lot more loud than traditional stainless. You can hear it, but watch, watch the free spin. That's with the line hitting this, this thumb bar every revolution. So if I had it tied down, it'd be going even further, but you can see how smooth it is. Pretty freaking cool. So there you go, guys. That's how to supercharge your bait caster reel on the cheap. Ceramic bearings do make a difference. You're not really gonna cast that much further, 
maybe a little bit. It really helps in short pitches and flips. That's where I see the biggest difference. But you still got to tighten down your spool to be able to cast because if you don't, you're going to backlash. So it will make your reel feel more smooth. It will make your reel a little bit louder, but it's less maintenance and it will make it smoother for flipping and pitching. And uh, I don't mind the noise. That's how to super tune your bait caster on the cheap. Did it with the Fin Supers. You guys check this stuff out. I, I think this is something I'll be using a lot. I've got it on my hands. It's not caustic or anything. And it really doesn't even have a bad smell. I'm doing this in my kitchen. And my wife's cooking right now, actually. So uh, that's another plus. Hope this helped you out, guys. If it did, give me that uh, thumbs up. And I will catch you guys on the next episode, probably looking at the new reel from Cast King. You guys take care. Come on.